I am all about delicious street food, but some of these smaller restaurants, they've just been a, a staple. That one since 1981. I'm sure this lady over here has been cooking up in that same spot for years and years, and she really knows what she's doing. Don't be afraid to get off the beaten path and, and try some of these local places. You can do a little bit of research, but just go to the most crowded places. Oh shoot, it's starting to sprinkle. I don't have an umbrella. So I need to uh, find somebody selling one or get out of the rain. When it starts to sprinkle here in Bangkok, it starts pouring 15 minutes later. Bottom line is just don't waste too many meals at McDonald's or Burger King while you're in Bangkok or anywhere abroad. Get out and try the local dishes. I just paid 80 baht for that delicious chicken fat tie and a bottle of water. I gave her, I think, 120 baht. And I mean, that's even crazy. Here we go, get a beautiful grilled fish for 100 baht. I was just talking to the lady selling those barbecued fish and, and I asked her, may I take a picture of the fish? She said, oh, absolutely. Do you, want, do you want to buy one? And I said, oh, I, I would, but I just had Pad Thai. And she was like, oh, Pad Thai, Pad Thai, right there, very famous. So everybody knows the uh, AR Pad Thai here, AR Simp, I guess it's called. And here's a guy making Pad Thai right at the street stand, right next to the papaya salad lady. His Pad Thai appears to be 60 baht, but he's got a lower overhead. So I have added to my collection of umbrellas I either lose them in cabs or like tonight. Nah, it's not gonna rain tonight. I've carried an umbrella the past two, three nights in a row. Not a drop of rain. I leave it at home tonight. Man, I'm in 7-Eleven paying another two or three bucks for, appears to be an elephant umbrella. My choices were the elephant or pink umbrella with baby bears. I'm at the very end of Soy 10 now. I'll call it Soy 10 Petchaburi, just because I don't know what else to call it. And I have no idea really where I'm at other than the BTS is that way I want to say two blocks and I know the Jim Thompson Museum is over there somewhere which means there and there will be the MBK shopping center and the end of the BTS at uh, National Station so I'm just gonna wander around it's still early like 7 30 p.m. I don't have anywhere to be till 9 so let's see what's around here this area just has a really local feel. Um, maybe because there's just small hotels, just little six-story kind of places. You get your Marriott's and your Hilton's and the kind of the Skyrise hotels. You're gonna attract more tourists. We got a barber shop and a beauty salon. Looks like a tailor shop over there. Busy working away, 7.30 on a Saturday night. See what's around this corner. Oh, this is the back side of that timber hostel, which I saw off of Petchaburi. And it doesn't look like much is going on. At the very end where you see the traffic, that's Soy 10. Now I don't know anything about the Buddhist religion, but I know these little prayer areas are everywhere. Even in a little small neighborhood like this, People will be walking by with their groceries or whatnot and, and come over here and do their daily meditation or say a quick prayer. I just watch a gentleman stand here for two or three minutes carrying his groceries. Here's an old school BMW waiting for restoration. Here's the motorcycle repair guy. Get a quick tire change or that guy will probably rebuild your engine for 20 bucks. A lot of coffee shops, barber shops, beauty parlors, just things the neighborhood needs. The vibe I'm getting is people are just kicking back in their shop, watching TV. Somebody happens to wander by at 8 or 8.30, get a haircut, why not? And a lot of these people, they may very well just live on one of the uh, two floors above. Hard-working people. I'm 
just as I ducked in to buy my umbrella in the 7-Eleven, I passed at least three more in less than three blocks. Cool looking restaurant, the Chef Bar restaurant with a 1970s, I think we had that TV in 1970. Problem was, I think we kept it till 1990. Now the Chef Bar. Pad Thai and fried egg noodles, pineapple fried rice, that's delicious. Oh, we got some delicious pork going on here. Right on the barbecue. And she's got a, also has a nice drive through service. So you're doing an indirect heat, right? The coals here and the food there? Oh, nice. I'm pretty sure she knows what she's doing. It smells delicious. I try to be respectful when I'm walking around, not sticking a camera in everybody's face. But an example of how mellow the Thai people are, that lady down there cooking that barbecue, it's 8 o'clock at night, and it's still... I don't know. If it were 85 degrees, I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably 77, but it still feels hot. She's standing over hot coals. I'm walking up. I want to take a picture of her beautiful setup, and I'm not buying any food. So I pull out a 20 baht note, which is a lousy 55 cents, and she's all, no, 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 you don't, you don't have to pay just to take a picture. No sweat off my back at all to throw 55 cents in the tip jar. I don't know. It seems like she has about six people around her stand right now. I'm not sure what she profits at the end of the night, but it, it better be a whole lot of money to stand over hot coals on a Bangkok street. 20 baht? That's not going to kill me at all. It, that's the decent thing to do when uh, asking to take a picture of her food. This is about the third hostel I've passed in this area. So this is a pretty nice area. If uh, you're on a limited budget, maybe research these, these hostels like the Daria. Is that how you say that, Daria? This looks like a cafeteria kind of set up. There's just one price I see, 120 baht. Maybe it's a all you can eat. I'm at Pechaberry 12 slash two. And this area of Bangkok, it's really reminded me a lot more of Hong Kong with its narrow alleys. And Bangkok's are usually uh, a lot more spread out. You'd be hard pressed to get a, a large car down this street. I saw a little compact just go by. But this is definitely uh, motorbike territory. And again, at almost 8 o'clock at night, every one of these places is open. Now, it's also primary, probably their residence above. So why not hang out down below where you have some good airflow? And if you're working on your tailoring project, get that out of the way. 8 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock at night, they need to get it done. I almost feel like I'm walking through uh, somebody's living room. I'm walking by a tool and die tool and die shop like a little machine shop and the whole family sitting there watching a soccer game way at the other end is petuary 12 slash 2 and now i'm popping back out on petuary 10 not to be intrusive but that's somebody's living room right below their uh their business or actually that is their business the bottom floor is the business and they sleep upstairs. Not a bad setup. And we're coming back out on Soy 10. And my uh, Pad Thai place was halfway down the block and up. Go back up to the main street, and that's Petchabury. Here's the mattress pad store. Not everybody's gonna be able to have a bed. So you'll have a mattress pad on the floor and put it away during the day.
Now Petchaberry is another crazy busy street like Sukhumvit, full of tour buses and honking taxis. But if you just get off in any direction into these little soys, you'll you'll find all kinds of interesting things there. I gotta watch my elbows standing next to the curb here. This is motorbike territory. <laughs> 